Hello. So last year I built a 3D printed combat robot and it had a drum weapon which ended up shattering because I built the whole weapon out of 3D printed material which isn't super impact resistant and the design was just bad. Uh, this year I'm going to try again in a 3D printed robot because everyone seems to have access to 3D printers and they want to get into combat robots and I think that 3D printed ABS does have a place in combat robots because you can do less than 100% infill and get lightweight structures. Um, I've just got to use the you know, account for the material weaknesses in my design. I am going with a drum weapon again this year, and I'm a really big fan of drum weapons as opposed to other spinner types in combat robots. When you have a vertically spinning weapon, you contact an enemy robot. The force is transmitted into the ground for you, but the enemy robot oftentimes goes flying, and you can get a flip in as well as an impact. Also compared to vertically spinning discs, the gyroscopic effect when trying to turn is a lot less when you have a drum. So with a big vertical disc, the radius is quite significant, and the max velocity at the edge of that disc is quite high. So you have all this mass traveling at a very high velocity with the large radius disc, and the disc doesn't want to be rotated out of plane. When you have a drum, you can store the same amount of energy as you can with a disc, but at a lower velocity which means you have uh, less resistance when trying to turn your robot quickly. Also, a disc only has one contact area to an enemy robot, but if you have a drum, the enemies have to avoid this whole front of the robot because this whole front is now dangerous. So, as you can see, I've chosen um, to use metal for my drum instead of plastic. It's a hollow aluminum cylinder. It's 1.75 inches in diameter. And because it's hollow, all of this mass is at the very outer perimeter of the cylinder. That's going to give me a really good energy to weight ratio. For the edges, I am using 3D printed material though, so this piece is going to go in the center. Uh, this hub goes on the right side, and you can see I have one on the left side as well. And uh, the teeth screw into nuts, which just embed like that in the 3D printed part. So for this chassis, I'm going to do something a bit weird that I haven't seen before. I'm going to use a combination of 3D printed material and three millimeter diameter carbon fiber rods to construct the whole thing. So it's all going to go together kind of like Tinker Toys and the carbon rods are going to slot into the holes in order to build the whole thing up. So in the end the whole chassis should be, should be flexible. These carbon rods can flex so the whole thing should be able to actually flex and take impacts without any real damage done. Up front I have a similar design to last year's Danger Zone but the, uh, the drum is a lot wider and these defensive wedges have gotten a lot smaller. So I'm designating more of the robot's weight to the weapon and a little bit less to the defenses. I spent some time and I slotted together the chassis. All of these parts are very tight press fit and so I did use a little dabs of super glue but that wasn't completely necessary. Up front I have two bushings uh, on either side. Originally I was going to use four bushings, uh, two per side of the drum mounts but when the chassis gets a little tweaked and a little bent, uh, the rod actually is not able to spin freely anymore. So if I just use one bushing per side, it spins freely even if something gets damaged and the whole chassis is torqued. I did have ball bearings, which I used last year, but these got damaged due to the impacts. So I'm going to stick with uh, plastic bushings. I think they're going to handle the impacts a little bit better. As you can see, I am using a brushless motor, and it is going to be... Um, belt driving the weapon. Uh, a lot of combat robots that have uh, that have these drums and are in the anti-weight division will move the uh, drive motor and they'll actually put it inside of the drum. But then all of your impacts on the weapon are just transferred to your drive motor, so you're more likely to damage the motor. And the two speed is really high when you have a drum that's run like that, so it's hard to get a good bite on the opponent. So with this belt, I'm going to have a little bit of speed reduction the drum will spin up a little faster and I think it will be overall more effective. The only two electronic components that I needed to attach to this chassis is the battery and the speed controller for this weapon drive motor because the rest of my electronics will all be packed in my modular control board that I'll add in a bit. Uh, now these two components I was originally going to put towards the center so that they'd be out of the way uh, but unfortunately the weight over this left wheel is quite high because of the motor right here so I had to pack them towards the back right so that the weight over the right wheel would be about equal and I'd have equal grip when I'm pushing opponent. Um, I did use adhesives to attach all this. Uh, I have just a mix of epoxy and Gorilla Glue that's just kind of messily put on there for both of the components. And I've had success in the past attaching parts like this with adhesives, but I will wrap it in tape so if one of these bonds breaks, my battery doesn't like fall out of my robot or drag on the ground.
This whole thing is coming together quite well. I've added my 3D printed wheels, which are just press fit onto the shafts, as well as the tires, which are the urethane molded ones that I made for last year. I also added these pegs so it can drive inverted, but these things need to be a little bit taller for this whole thing to actually work. Also, I'm really happy with the weight. Um, so if we just toss this on the scale right now, um, I'm a little bit under 13 ounces, which is perfect. I still have about three ounces to play with. So that means that I can actually add armor. I'm using uh, Instamorph plastic. In order to paint shape lock plastic, it's normally too smooth, so I just use Gojo hand cleanser. You made it to the end. I ended up talking for a little bit too long, so I'm going to break this video into three sections. This was the chassis weapon hardware section, basically. I'm going to have a separate video for the electronics and the modular control board, and then I'll have a third video where I get this thing up and running and actually run some tests, see how it performs, and any changes that I need to make when I do testing, I'll include in that final video. So thank you very much for watching.